Good morning and welcome to the lecture series of the course TSFS-03, Vehicle Propulsion Systems. To introduce you to the content, we can call this course the Hybrid Vehicle Course. And the main content is about energy analysis of vehicles and also about optimal control for best fuel economy of vehicles. My name is Lars Eriksson. And I am a former student of the Y program and I have been doing research at Vehicular Systems since 1995 and I have been continuously working with fuel efficient vehicle propulsion systems, optimizing the efficiency of engines and also optimizing the efficiency of complete powertrains as well as worked a little bit with SHIC. This course is about analyzing the energy demand on vehicles and with the knowledge about the energy demand we're also looking in how to optimize different components in a vehicle powertrain. Before going into the details of the course I will make some first remarks about the books that we have selected for the teaching and for the main material. It's Vehicle Propulsion Systems by Lino Guzzella and Antonio Chiaretta. There are many books uh, about hybrid vehicles and hybrid vehicle components, but the selected book is among the few that is analytical in content so that you can get equations that you can work to analyze performance and understand the key properties and that you later can use in synthesis of, for example, control algorithms or design and optimization of future vehicles. So that's the context of the course. And let's now jump into the essence of the lecture series. The essence of the lecture series will be on energy analysis and energy optimization. And this lecture will be focused on giving you an introduction to where does this course fit in into the big system and also about energy system. So the lecture will be about the course. First we'll go into a higher level description of where the course fits in and then we'll go into the details about what will be important for you in terms of completing the assignments and what you are supposed to hand in and how we will run the course from the practical perspectives. Then we will go in to discuss more about the energy demand of vehicles and look at some interesting perspectives on energy optimization and especially why have we ended up with liquid hydrocarbons as a key fuel and also hopefully show you the big challenges that we have in front of us that you as students can work on to improve the future. So for those of you who have elected this uh, course on vehicle propulsion system, it's a very hot topic for the debate in the society right now. And uh, you can always find people who have uh, ideas about vehicles. And uh, it's a very nice area to work in because you can discuss your work with more or less anyone. And you can motivate why are you doing your work, what does this contribute to the engineering development in the future? And the things that are bringing debate is of course that we have the freedom, the use of that people want to preserve, we want to have the ability to go where we want, we don't want to be limited. And we also have uh, systems that have different appeal to different persons, so people get personally attached to either vehicles or to some properties. And on the other side, when we're using the vehicles, we're consuming resources that are limited and we have a direct influence uh, on the environment. So we have things that we would like to have and we have things that we need to take care of. This is always debated. For example, we have the Toyota Prius, which is the role model of the efficient vehicle. And then we have the, the Hummer that's uh, the role model of gas guzzling resource consumer. Some people like the one, the others like the other. And then we have those that, for example, like sports cars. Here we have a Ferrari and this is a special vehicle. It's not to be called a car, but it's extremely efficient and it has been designed to break the record in the Shell Echo Marathon. So in this area, we have a lot of feelings mixed with 
the engineering design challenges to have as little impact as possible on the future environment. Uh, when we look at what's going on in the society, we see that we have a diversity of the powertrain configurations that are appearing. We have a conventional internal combustion engine powertrains, we have the diesel engine, we have the gasoline engine, and there are new concepts appearing like, for example, the Mazda Sky Active X, which is a mixture between diesel and uh, gasoline uh, processes. Uh, we also have hybrid powertrains that probably haven't escaped anyone, that we have parallel series, complex configurations, and uh, there is also appearing fuel cell electric vehicles, and we also have the electric vehicles that are taking a bigger share of the market. Still the market share is very low, but anyway, it's uh, increasing. And the course goals that we have set up is to give you all an introduction to powertrain configurations and also the optimization methods uh, that you can use and what optimization problems uh, you encounter when you develop vehicles that have as little fuel consumption as possible or energy consumption as possible. And we'll work with mathematical models and methods for analyzing powertrain performance and also optimizing the powertrain energy efficiency. So that's also why using this book so that you will get the analytical tools for doing the engineering work, not only know about the subjects, but also be able to do synthesis and um, experiments, of course, in virtual platforms. So your task will be to design fuel efficient vehicles for the future or energy efficient vehicles of the future. What are the top priorities in the development? Of course, it's the fuel economy. And one saying is that better cars are our best oil wells. Another task is to reduce the costs, which gives the company you're working for better margins, which gives you salary in your pocket. Then to sell vehicles, you need to make them drivable so that the driver feel comfortable while it's driving the car, feel that it's safe while it's driving the car. So safety is also an important part. And then emissions. Emissions are of course extremely important for the sustainability of our society and the health of human beings and the world. When we talk about emissions, we have different dimensions. We have exhaust emissions, which is what most people think about, but we also have road dust and we have noise. And legislations are posed to reduce the harmful emissions. In the courts, all issues are important, but the first item is the main topic here. So coming to vehicle properties, the vehicle in focus in this course is passenger cars, and it's also in the focus in the course book. So what characterizes passenger cars then? Uh, they are autonomous and uh, they don't depend on a fixed power grid. They have refueling time negligible compared to the driving time between two refuelings. You can transport two to six persons and some payload. You can accelerate from zero to 100 kilometers in 10 to 15 seconds, or you can drive uphill a 5% ramp at legal top speed. When we're talking about the course contents, the methods and tools that we will give you are also applicable to trucks and other transportation systems like uh, railways. The numerical values of the vehicles and the demands on different performance parameters are different, but the principles are still the same, but that the optimum solutions will differ depend on the demands. Coming in where this course fits into the society, we look at this big graph that entails the life cycle of a vehicle. In the life cycle of a vehicle, we have things from take sources of raw material, we manufacture the vehicle, and then we distribute and repair and maintain the vehicle. And then we have the end customer here that is using it, and when it's uh, finished, it should be scrapped and recycled. And the other part that we have as impact is the, the consumption of energy sources. We have primary energy sources, we have fuel manufacturers, we have fuel distribution, and then we end up here. And then as a central point here, we have governments that are restricting the use of harmful components and put legislations on what fuel properties we should have and also about how we should manufacture and also how to recycle vehicles. And also the governments giving a key point in the infrastructure. For example, right now people are talking about electrical roads, uh, infrastructure for hydrogen. So there's a lot of things going on in the area. One of the important things for you is to know that you are acting as engineers in a society where a lot of things can influence. 
But in this course we will focus on the energy path and we'll look at fuel and how we use fuel so that the energy consumption will be a benefit for the end customer. So we'll talk about uh, the design in the car, different design options with different hybridizations and the impact that it will have on the fuel economy for us as end customer and thus as uh, the energy consumption of the total society. So now when you know where the course fits in, we'll go a little bit into uh, the course details that will be important for your hand-ins. So the hand-in assignments that you're doing uh, will be done individually. So your task is to work with hand-in assignments that you will be able to read about in a compendium. We have a sequence of five hand-in assignments where each hand-in assignment has a set of mandatory tasks and it has a set of optional tasks. The first hand-in assignment is about fuel consumption requirement of a driving mission. And you will work with methods and tools for analyzing this energy consumption of vehicles. And it contains both mandatory tasks and it contains some optional tasks. The second hand-in assignment will be about optimal control of series and parallel hybrid concepts and you will work with offline optimal control so you will be able to get a good grasp of what is the optimum energy consumption that you could get from a hybrid vehicle and also you will get insight into the optimum behavior of the control strategies. But this is offline and the next task is then directed into online control. And it's a ECMS, which stands for Equivalent Consumption Minimization Strategy that is possible to use for online energy management of vehicles. Then we have two optional tasks. One will be for short term energy storage and the last one is uh, fuel cell vehicles. So to get pass on the course, you have to complete all mandatory tasks and that will give you grade three. Then you have optional tasks that gives you an opportunity to have higher grades. So coming to the grading, we have pass will give you grade three. So you must complete all mandatory tasks. You hand them in, they are examined. And then if you have done some mistakes, you are uh, required to make corrections. So you correct them and you hand them in again, and then you iterate until you have passed all the hand in. For higher grades, there is a group of extra tasks that are given points and they are shown in the compendium. The compendium shows how many points you get for each extra task and those extra tasks you work with them, you hand them in like you do with a regular exam and we grade them and there is no possibility to add complementary things after you have handed it in. So it's very much like an exam, you make it once, you get graded for it but you don't need to hand in all of them at once. So you can, for example, make a sequence of tasks first and then see how many points you get. And then you hand in a second sequence and then you see, okay, should I aim for a grade four or should I aim for grade five? More details are found in the project compendium and deadlines are given on the homepage and on LISAM so that you know when you are supposed to hand them in. Coming to the resource for the course, computer tools are necessary to be able to solve interesting problems. We can do some hand calculations, but uh, computer tools are necessary to be able to solve interesting problems. And you can do some hand calculations, but to make really interesting problems, you have to have access to computers and more detailed models than you can work with by hand. So in this course, we work with MATLAB and Simulink that the main tool within industry is using for developing their controllers and their control systems. And you will have regular MATLAB and Simulink, so you need nothing extra as such. And we will provide you with some extra packages for this particular course, which you will be able to download from the homepage and use. If you have a, your own computer, we urge you to use this for distance teaching as we are in this distance mode right now. You're also more effective with your own computer than using other uh, computer systems. So if you have your own computer, use it. If you don't own a computer, we have still three computer rooms booked on two occasions per week so that if you don't have a computer, you can use it to complete your tasks. 
but this is not a teaching session so there will be no teachers there but there should be plenty of space so you can use the computers there as long as you respect the guidelines of social distancing but you should not count on this uh, as it could be changed if the university shuts down the campus completely then these resources uh, cannot be uh, upheld for you but if we go into distance mode you can always do remote login and you can use the computer resources at the campus from remote desktoping into the machines there and you can use the computational resources if your computer isn't strong enough for making the hand-ins anyway concerning the schedule i've talked about uh, in an introduction video how we are using the computer room sessions to have query and answer slots for you uh, over zoom so we will use zoom and when we have computer sessions scheduled in the schedule we will have teachers sitting being ready for you to answer your questions or zoom and you should see this as a support opportunity so you work with the assignments you gather your questions and then you go to the zoom room and you ask your questions you can also attend these uh, zoom rooms even though that you haven't had the questions because you can maybe learn from fellow students questions and you are then more prepared when you come to those points yourself in the course so i recommend you to participate in those sessions uh, and as a preparation if you haven't um, worked very much with matlab and simulink recently i urge you also to start browsing up on matlab and simulink programming experience uh, the course tool and communication that we will have will be mainly through lisam and then you have these videos and you have the zoom room for query and answers and the course page will give practical course information about the mini projects that you are solving and the zoom time slots will be online tool for direct communication you can also send emails out of these uh, zoom times about the hand-ins in Lisam, you know that we have uh, deadlines and you will of course be able to make all deadlines and uh, complete everything in time. These deadlines are selected so that you will have uh, a flow and pace of the course so you will be able to follow what goes on. And it also enables the teachers to be effective when they're doing the corrections. So if it happens that you are not able to make a deadline then you should make a first empty hand in and make it available in Lisam so that it's in because Lisam will close the possibility to hand in after the deadline if you've already submitted an empty one then it's in the system and you can make corrections to it if it's not in the system it will mean a lot of extra administration for the teachers here so with this I think it's a good idea to take a break and refresh your brain and get ready for the next part of this first lecture. So see you in a little bit.